I'm Peter Block here in Washington, D.C. at ACC 17. On my left is Eike Nagel from Frankfurt, Germany. Dr. Nagel uh, has done an extraordinarily interesting study, possibly a game changer, having to do with MR imaging versus FFR. So patients with coronary disease and what do we do to figure out whether they need an invasive test and a fix. So Eike, tell me what your trial was all about. So in the MR Inform, we have been looking at patients with a very high likelihood for coronary artery disease, um, stable angina, two or more risk factors, and we have randomized them either into FFR-guided arm, so they had an invasive angiography plus FFR, or into an MR-guided arm, where they had a non-invasive MR perfusion test. The management of the patients was then guided based on the results found either by the invasive strategy or the non-invasive strategy. So if you had positive ischemia on your MR scan, you still got your invasive test? You then got an invasive angiography and most likely a revascularization. So about 70% of the patients who had a positive MR scan were finally revascularized. Okay, so tell me about what the study showed because here you have two groups of people, very different kinds of uh, testing to figure out whether they needed a study, an invasive study. The main outcome is that both arms performed equally. So there was, no non there was non-inferiority of MR versus invasive angiography with exactly the same outcome. Approximately 3% event rate per year for both groups within the first year. Well, that tells me that if I had coronary disease uh, and was uh, symptomatic but stable, I'd prefer to have an MR, wouldn't I, rather than having a cardiac cath? It's definitely the way to go, to having a non-invasive test where you look at the functional consequences of ischemia first, and only if you have significant ischemia, move towards an invasive angiography and then revascularization. Okay, so uh, the good news about MR scanning, uh, I could tell me all the good things that uh, beat CT angiography, for example, or an invasive test. So first of all, it's free of radiation. Uh, second, the contrast agents used do not harm the kidney. So it's fast, it can be done within, the, within less than an hour. Most tests take about 20 to 30 minutes and afterwards you can go back to work if it's negative or go back home. And you only need the invasive procedure if you have a very high likelihood of actually needing revascularization. Okay, one last question and that is the false negatives. This is always a problem. How many false, ne or sorry, false positives or false negatives do you see with MR imaging? So false negatives we don't know because we haven't looked at, um, at the anatomy in those patients who had a negative MR. We had a very low rate of non per protocol angiographies, so 12 in the MR group in total, um, showing that we didn't miss any relevant disease or not a lot of relevant disease. And because the event rate was low, we also shows that we didn't miss those patients which actually need to be revascularized. False positives, we had about 8% of patients who had a positive MR scan, but then no revascularization performed for various reasons, um, which is partially false positives or non-revascularizable vessels. Okay, so uh, a take-home question for all the clinicians out there taking care of patients with stable angina. Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to tell them? So it's important to understand that you can do a non-invasive test first, which guides patient management safely and is the way to go rather than going towards invasive angiography as a first-line test. So there you are, think MR.